Hello, Monetization Nation. I'm Nathan William, your host, and welcome back to another episode with John Jantz. John is a marketing consultant, speaker, and author. In the last episode, we discussed duct tape marketing and how to implement better strategies. Today, we're going to continue the conversation on marketing and discuss how we can create the ultimate marketing engine. We will also cover the following key takeaways. Number one, the companies that really survive and thrive in the long haul are the ones that are meaningful in the lives of their customers. Number two, uncovering the main problem our customers face is the starting point for developing our overall strategy. Number three, we should narrow our focus to only the top 20% of our customers. Number four, once we develop our strategy, then we can begin to work on the tactics. And number five, it is easier and more cost effective to get a referral than it is to get a brand new customer. Uh, let's shift here to Ultimate Marketing Engine. And uh, this is your newest book, right? It is. It is. And in this book, you talk about five steps for growth. Can you walk me through those? Sure. So probably the biggest innovation that, that I would like to uh, suggest I brought to this book, and a lot of it came around... You, you know, I signed the contract for this uh, book, Nathan, uh, March 15th, uh, 2020. So I'll give you a second to think about what you were doing on that date. Um, you know, we all thought the world was ending right <laughs> right then. And so I thought, well, what the heck am I going to write about now? You know, no, nobody wants to read a book about how to market in a you know time of a pandemic. Um, but what I saw and what really informed a lot of this book was what was happening to, to, to many of my customers. Some, some people were just in the wrong place at the wrong time and in the wrong industry. But I also saw a lot of my customers not only survive, actually thrive um, during this period by, because they had developed such a culture of, of getting close to their customers, actually being meaningful in the lives of their customers. We had, we had uh, folks that, you know, you know, were getting, you know, emails, you know, back from customers when they shut down, you know, saying essentially, you know, I, I, you know, what, what, what can we do to support you? You know, we'll be here, you know, when, uh, you know, when, when things get back to normal, can we pay you in advance? I mean, and it's shown such a bright light to me on something that's really always been true. Um, but I think we've gotten away from it. And, and that is that, that, you know, the companies that really survive and thrive in the long haul are ones that are meaningful in the lives of their customers. So a great deal of this book is understanding, you know, how can we do, how can we actually um, create that as, as some, as a, you know, a part of our marketing? I mean, how can we, how can we think in terms of, you know, the, the, the transformations that our customers want to go on? How can we think in terms of taking them from where they are today to where they want to go? So not just selling today's fix, but literally developing what I call the customer success track, which is a roadmap that says, look, my customers come to me in this stage. They have these characteristics. They have these challenges. And I know that if I can accomplish these tasks, these milestones, I can take them to the next stage. But then what would the next stage look like and the next stage? So, for example, in my business, you know, I, I am a marketing consulting firm. People come to us quite often in what I call the foundational stage. Things aren't really working systematically. They've typically they've gotten customers, they've grown their business, but their website's not producing anything for them. Their online presence in general is not that effective. We know that if we can do certain things in that stage, we can now start using their online presence to generate leads. And then the next stage, we can start converting leads. And then we can create monthly recurring revenue. And then maybe we even get their business ready to scale or not just scale, but, but maybe exit their business. Most marketers are thinking about fixing a website. So what if we built the customer success track and said, look, we'll fix your website, but uh, let me show you where we're going. Let me show you what we have to put in place in the long term. You know, that's how you create customers for life. But I think it's also how you completely differentiate your business. So in this book, I, I show you exactly how to create a customer success track for where you are today and, and with your customers, but maybe where they want to go in the future. I actually give you the entire marketing roadmap. So if you're somebody who wants to know what my customer success track looks like and all the milestones that you have to accomplish to, to go to the next level and the next level, you'll have that. Um, but the real innovation that I want to bring to the world is that, that I think every business can do something similar to this, regardless of the industry that you're in. Now, Steps. So that's step number one, map where your best customers are today and where they want to go. Uh, step number two is uncover the real problem that you solve. So we talked about that a little bit already. 
I really make a case for that, you know, being the starting point for developing uh, your your overall strategy, your overall messaging, and and ultimately the content that you produce. Um, the, the the thing that uh, step number three is to narrow your focus to the top. 20% of your customers. So I spent a lot of time uh, trying to make a case for saying, look, there is a customer out there that's in your customer base that is profitable, that has a great experience because they have the right problem. They probably refer business to you. What if you could discover everything there was about them with the idea that, that that's who you would focus all of your marketing on, attracting more of them, but that you would also build this customer success track with the idea that some percentage of them would do 10 times the business with you than they are today if you could show them what the next level of value looked like. And some smaller percentage might even spend 100 times uh, more business or do 100 times more business with you if you could show them what the ultimate roadmap looked like for them. <clears throat> Step number four really is where, and this, if, if I get any two-star reviews, Nathan, I haven't yet, but if I get any, it'll be because I waited till chapter eight in step four to actually talk about things like what your website needs to do, what your content needs to do, what channels you need to be in. And the reason I put that so deep in a marketing book is because without developing the first three steps, we are quite likely going to waste our time. You could come to me and say, I want to you know, design me a website that's pretty. Um, and that's uh, unfortunately what a lot of people do. But uh, I can also tell you that in my experience, about 90% of the small business owners who have a website will tell you it does nothing for them <laughs> or it does very little for them or they don't know what it does for them. Um, but part of that is because they've, they've neglected to build the strategy that's actually going to make pretty much every marketing tactic uh, pay for them. And then finally, Step number five is scale with your customers by serving their entire ecosystem. This chapter, entire chapter, is essentially a playbook on how to think more proactively about referral generation. Um, so I talk, I, I, it's, everybody knows this. It is so much easier to get somebody who is already doing business with you, that already trusts you, <laughs> to give you the next dollar to do more business. They've, you've already established that trust. They know what they're going to get uh, from you if they engage you to do something else. They know what they're going to get if they tell their friend that they should hire you. Yet we spend an inordinate amount of time chasing that person that we have to convince uh, that we can get them a result, that we have to convince that we are trustworthy and credible. So I make a case for, in fact, I unpack seven um, ways in which you can build referral generation into uh, pretty much everything you do in your marketing. And, and really the, the point of view that that should be the ultimate end of a customer journey, that, uh, that, that you are growing with your customers, that you are building strategic partnerships to, to add more value to your customers, that you're creating your own networking clubs, uh, that you are actually teaching referrals uh, to other businesses. So um, that, that last chapter alone, many businesses, particularly businesses that are referable, that people, their customers do like them, their customers do refer them. Um, I think that last chapter alone um, will will give you so many ideas on ways that you can um, you know, eventually implement into your business to, to really, I think, build the ultimate momentum, which is a, a referral engine. I love it. All comes back around. So it feels like ultimate marketing engine in some ways is, is a kind of next evolution of these two books. What are the key takeaways? What what did you learn? What what did you evolve to that's different from these earlier books? Well, I think I think certainly the the customer success track is um, I think is a somewhat of an innovation in the world of marketing. Period, um, and and so I would suggest that that you know that is more than an evolution. I mean that is a really a next new big idea. Um, talking about uh, you know core message and strategy uh, is certainly is certainly an evolution of things that I've written about in the past. Same with uh, really the the idea of referrals um, are really evolutions. I think the package, like many cases, um, many of these ideas have been written by other people. Um, I think package them, packaging them in this book under the banner of you know the ultimate marketing engine is a successful customer um, is is probably what. What takes some of these ideas that that maybe feel like evolutions and and put them into you know kind of a greater whole um, that that you know makes this book work. This book is this book is essentially I like to refer to it as a big fat strategy book that that has a workshop kind of tucked inside of it. 
What's the most controversial advice that you've given? Well, the one that I get the most pushback is when I tell people I need you, I need you to pick the top 20% of your customers and make all of your focus on them. Because I'm ultimately saying there's people you can no longer do business with. There's people you should no longer do business with. Because here's the thing, the, the ultimate marketing engine is a successful customer but it comes with the recognition that you can't make every customer successful. Not every customer is a good fit. You can't actually, in fact, what I tell people all the time is, look at your customer base today and tell me who you provide the most value to right now. Um, and for a bonus, who you provide the most value to the fastest. Because if you can identify that group, that's who you need to be going after. That's you need to make all of your marketing, basically telling if you're this, if you have this problem, you know, if you need this solution, we absolutely, that's what we do. We fix that problem. We, you know, if you, if, if you're looking for that solution, we're the only person for you. You build all of your marketing around that and you, you stop chasing today's dollar, which can be hard because somebody shows up and says, I'm going to give you $5 today to do this thing. Um, what we under, we, we often overestimate the value of that. Um, and we terribly underestimate the cost, the lost opportunity in not being seen as the best solution provider for X type of client. Okay. So if we decide we want to focus on our 80% best, or sorry, 20% best customers, how do you drop those other 80% of customers? Well, I'm not necessarily suggesting you drop them. Maybe the bottom 20% you drop, that'll be pretty obvious. To most people, they're like, we're losing money here. <laughs> you know, we hate working with this guy. I mean, some people, that's a, that's like a gift. <laughs> you know, it's like, I just hadn't seen it in black and white like this. The reality is you're not going to drop 80%. Although I will say it might be 80% of your customer base. It might only be 20 or 30% of your actual revenue or your actual profit. <laughs> and then it saves you all sorts of customer service expense and Yeah. So so a, a lot of one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is drop that bottom 80%, double down on what you do for your um top 20% and then double your prices. And then double your prices. I love it. Yep. You you you'll be ahead and uh you'll Take a lot you less know, work. Do a lot less work for it. <laughs> okay. So you talk about in your books, how strategy should come before tactics. Would you ex expound upon that a little bit? Well, we, you know, that's pretty much all we've been talking about, Nathan, quite frankly, I maybe haven't said it that way, but, but that's really, you know, uh, so many businesses, you know, want to, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times they've contacted me and said, we need a Facebook ad campaign. Okay. Maybe you do. <laughs> Let's back up. Let's talk about why. Let's talk about who. Let's talk about what. Um, and, and and that's essentially all we're saying with the strategy is that, you know, if, if somebody can't tell how you're different, if you can't communicate how you're different in a way that's meaningful to an ideal customer, uh, you're always going to be you're always going to be fighting the money or the price shopping game. So a lot of what strategy does is helps you define why people should charge a premium or why people should expect to pay a premium for what it is that you do. At that point, it makes it very easy. I think once you develop that strategy of how you want to be seen in the market, how you want to position yourself in the market, what it does is it sort of chooses in a way the tactics that that are most right to execute on that strategy or communicate that strategy. And I think what so many people do is they go out and they pick a couple, you know, disconnected tactics um, and call that marketing. And, and so it's really just a matter of saying, you know, let's have a let's have a plan for what we're going to do, how we're going to do it and what we're not going to do and why we're not going to do it. Can you share with us a story of a company that's implemented this ultimate marketing engine? Well, the book's only been out for a number of, of you know, under this title for a number of weeks, really. But this is something that um, it's something that we've we have built into pretty much everybody we've worked with, you know, over the years. So pretty much every client, I don't, I don't know, you know, that, that example I gave you of the remodeling contractor is probably as close. To, I mean, that's, but we've really kind of covered a lot of that ground uh, in there because it's something that, that we do. Um, I am starting to get some really interesting feedback from people that have now read the book that are, are really applying, particularly this customer success track in, some some ways I hadn't really thought of, um, you know, applying it to the nonprofit sector, for example, um, and another large hospital system. Somebody in there, 
um, their people operations um, that that really is his his charge is really to kind of build their core values into pretty much everything they do so that they stay you know present and alive in and what they're doing and so he's actually using the the customer success track framework to uh, to really implement you know something that's essentially culture uh, inside their organization so uh, I, I'm really excited to see the ways that people are embracing this but just uh, really see where it goes too because it, it it is like I said what, what I'd like to suggest is probably the biggest innovation in the book and when we systematize something like this usually some of the biggest benefits are consistency of growth and ability to scale that that were real hard to do in when we were developing strategies yeah. one off I uh, would you agree with that would they would those be two of the biggest benefits of this I think absolutely but I, I think what what often is not said a lot of times we think of things in 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 terms of efficiencies for ourselves <laughs> but I actually think we get better at delivering the value to the customer uh, as well, um, which, which quite frankly makes us far more profitable. And I think that a lot of times when people think systems and process, they think, how do we streamline? How do we delegate? You know, how do we make things more efficient for us? But I think the customer actually benefits and, and that really should lead to more profit for you. Thank you so much, John, for sharing your stories and insights with us today. To learn more about or connect with John, you can find him on YouTube. You can check out his books on Amazon or visit his website at theultimatemarketingengine.com. And there's links to each of those sites in the blog post for this episode on our website. You can also get a free copy of my ebook about passion marketing and learn how you can become a top priority of your ideal customers at passionmarketing.com. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode, and I wish you success in building your ultimate marketing engine. Do you want to become a better digital monetizer? To receive great monetization stories and secrets, please go to monetizationnation.com and join free. And if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the show and share it.